Good evening and welcome to our fourth uh, and final masterclass. It's going to be a double feature um, masterclass tonight here, uh, live from the Caleta Hotel Gibraltar at the Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival. And our very special guest uh, for the first part of the show, Kaspar Piorun from Poland. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show, Kaspar. Um, you have something very special. Well, you're obviously a very strong over the board grandmaster, but tell us what title you also hold. What other title? Uh, actually, I, I've prepared for you some problems uh, from the other discipline I uh, try to, you know, to participate. Uh, I've prepared some problems for some solving competitions uh, because of the fact I'm a uh, four times world uh, solving champion. I four times world solving champion. You're yeah. a solving grandmaster. Problem of course, solving. of yeah. course. And I hope to encourage you to try, uh, you know, to solve something and maybe to participate in some competition. Okay. So we're going to have a look at some problems, some chess problems. Yes, to to my session will be only all about problems. Nothing else, just problems. Easy, okay. I think easy. <laughs> and easy, easy for you, maybe. I mean, That's easy okay, for we'll me, uh, but I hope uh, you will enjoy this. Okay, so should we have pull up the first position? Actually, this is the first position uh, I would like you to solve by yourself. I mean. Uh, this is the problem I solved uh, during my last solving tournament uh, in war, so it was two months ago. Uh, why to play and win? And I will give the solution uh, at the beginning of my at the at the end of my session. Right, okay. So give the to the end you have session. time. You have plenty of time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, we have right. like 30 minutes per one study. To with your mobile and yes. Hmm. So it is wise to play and win. Yes, wise to play and win. So all of that study, nothing special. I Th think. And this is an easy one. Did you say it should be? It should be. It sh it sh I think 30 minutes is, is enough. No, well, that's <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes. Right. Well, okay. Uh, so now I would like to go to the next problem. Right. So is I will try that? to say something about what is solving and what, uh, how, uh, what is the. I mean, how did you how did you become interested in problem solving and, and take it so far as far as you have done? Uh, well, actually, to be honest, four times it's not the world uh, record. I mean, in, uh, in the number of parties, it's, ev it's even not a Polish uh, record. Right, okay. Uh, and I would say, by the way, I would, say, I would like to say hi to seven, seven or eight times world champion Piotr Mojja. So I think he, is like, he has like the most, uh, the biggest amount of titles. And we, and I remember th that we played one game on Polish League. It was seven years ago. And after that, he asked me, Kasper, would you like to take part in a solving competition? And I was hesitating a little, but I said, okay, why not? And that's how it happened. Um, then I started traveling. Uh, I managed to visit many places like uh, Japan, uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. Uh, Georgia, and so on. So I also had the chance to s to encounter uh, uh, new cultures. But you mean in in problem solving competitions? In, in problem solving competitions. In, also in Japan, really? Yes, in Japan. Nice, interesting. Oh, surprise for me. <laughs> so what's the second position here? So uh, basically, I would like to say uh, about how the solving competition looks. So firstly, we have to solve mate in two. So this is mate in two. Mate in two moves. White always starts, of course. White al always starts, of course. And I would also I would like to say, what does the experienced solver try to smell in this position? I mean, what themes does the typical solver try to find? So usually, 
we are looking for an orthodox moves. Right, something you would never play to over the board. Right. And you can try to uh, find, I will give you a hint. I mean, here we can see the black, for example, black is in stalemate, that's the first black thing Black is I see. in stalemate, that is the base impression, so you would love to give some space to think. Bishop g5 maybe? Yes, bishop g5 I take with, uh, I take on g6 and there is no mate. King takes, g uh, yes, if pawn takes bishop, queen takes h5 will be mate, but king takes g6, yes. bishop g5. <laughs> Yeah, uh, nice try. So nice try. So we need to give black a move. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> king e7. King e7. E okay, that gives some squares to black king, but what after king g7? Of the knight f8, I have square on h8. <coughs> so basically, white plays a move, black replies, and then white delivers checkmate. That's what we yes. have to find. Okay, because I have many problems, I will try to give some hints. So here is the first hint. Okay, that will be obvious, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we try to look for long moves. Wrong moves. Long. Oh, long, long moves. Not long, I mean... Long, I thought you said wrong. Long, 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 long moves. Yeah. Rock A1. Rock A1. So... And, okay, king has to take on g6, and the rook allows queen to move to p1, allows queen to move to p1, Very nice. and there's a mate. It has, this theme has, even the name is called Piston theme. Bristol theme. Pistol theme. My father lives in Bristol. Oh, really? Yeah. I used to live in uh, Bristol. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea. Yeah, uh, no, well now you know, now you know, yeah. So a good one to start with. So, we are looking for long moves. As I understand it, because I've seen this thing before, the Bristol theme is you move a uh, piece to along a line to the last square to mm -hmm. free the square behind it, or like, like this, something like that, right? Yes. It's Bristol theme. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, uh, I will go to the next uh, problem. So, rule number one is, Corner moves and long moves are important to look at during this uh, when you want to solve this puzzle. Uh, By the way, before we pass on to the next one, just quickly, um, do you also compose problems? Mates no, in two, mates no. in three. Have you ever tried to compose? No, but no? I've, s I've seen people change to, and it was like too much for me. Too much right, for you. Right now, maybe. Right. Maybe later. Maybe okay. like uh, when I stop playing chess, I will try to focus on this. <laughs> okay, so this is the also made in two. And we try to use the knowledge uh, that you gained, you've gained from the first problem. So long moves and or corner moves. Hmm. Queen A2, exactly. So there are some variations. So if the king goes to a8, then the knight is pinned. That's nice. If, if the king goes to c6, then queen d5 is a mate. And if knight c8, then there is some tricky promotion. Mm, you promote the knight. That's beautiful. And <laughs> it's the mate. That's the only mate in one, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, the, no the only mate in one. And this is also beautiful uh, to have some anti promotions, some to promote the most valuable piece. Uh, can we go to the next one? Uh, it's also a typical motive to not to promote the most valuable piece, but for instance, the knight, who is which, which is more capable of in this position than the queen, because it gives mate in one. Okay, and third thing. To or, oh no, it's actually a certain thing you have to know, it's sacrifices. Sacrifices are beautiful. Let's see if anyone in the audience can get this one, Casper. Let's see. Or maybe somebody watching the show, they could they type in, uh, they could tell us. I must say, I've it. shown this problem to, uh, to the commentators. And right. I mean, they had some problems with this. That, so they needed some hint. 
but let's just have a quick look at it. Okay. Why to play in checkmate in two moves? Green f5. Green f5. Five. Five. Draw that. Hey. Oh, I mean, oops, I planted the queen. A queen is tentated. But you don't see on your own that nothing uh, is worth. Uh, I don't know if I can put. Ah, I can put. So you take with pawn. 35 is made. You take, you take with lord. Then I take 26. Uh, if you take with the queen, then I draw 97. <laughs> I take with the knight. I draw knight g4. Fantastic. Uh, I take with bishop <laughs> knight f3. <laughs> uh, I take with this knight, lord g4. And I think I forgot something. With the king. I, I think with the king. Oh, this is beautiful. And oh. then the pot. Uh, we are Fantastic. losing the pin. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm 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 happy so to say that the problems are not so demanding for you. So black could take that queen, I think, eight different ways. Yes. Fantastic. And of course, for a problem to be correct, there must only be one solution. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't yeah. the possession. Uh, but uh, this is quite a famous one here. Yeah? Yes, this is known one. So solve this. I will not ask you to solve this, but what I want to say, te tell you that composers like such funds. So the queen a5, of course, the long move, that is in such funds. You want to, you want to suggest some move? <laughs> Bishop h6. Bishop h6, let's try. We go. Queen takes before knight. Okay, two more suggestions. Bishop c5. Bishop c5. Mm. That's what I wanted to suggest. So then, queen mm. a1. From both sides, love strongness. Okay, and one more. I gave up. The other guys tried this one. <laughs> Someone else in the audience? Or the just to show what yeah, the seven. To move rook. Just you know, I I travel the bishop, so I then knight with the knight. Sam okay. Sam Lloyd, right? The composer. Moving on. Sam Lloyd, yeah, very yeah, famous composer. Yeah. American. So do you feel what at what position you have to make go for Zook's one or which one you have to go for sacrifice? Or do you have like some some feeling or? Uh, at the beginning, I've had some problems, but then I, uh, when I solve like hundreds of puzzles, then I started realizing when I have to look for search fund and when I have to look for some thread. I will take, tell about the thread. Uh, I think it's the next problem. Uh, oh, it, I just the one I wanted to know to show. <laughs> So there will be no made in there. I, I, uh, I apologize for technical problems. <laughs> Tell us who your favorite composer is, really quick. Hmm. My favorite composer. Uh, I will show later my favorite uh, problem. It's made by one, I think, uh, one of the greatest uh, study composers uh, from Russia, uh, Oleg Pirfakov. And he made three difficult problems, but if you find the, the idea, then you don't get really excited. Yes, yeah, so, uh, well, I apologize uh, for the difficulty of this problem, so why to play and win? <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to show also made in C, uh, because this is the second round of typical solving competition. And we have one hour to solve uh, uh, three problems. In general, if in every round, we have three problems to solve. And there is specified time for each round. So like I, as I said, for two movers, we, ha we have 20 minutes. Uh, for three movers, we have an hour. And uh, for studies, three studies, we have 100 minutes. 
Okay. Sometimes it's too much. Sometimes it's not enough. So what about this problem? So this is a cheeky one. Yes, I'm sorry to put the problem with a and passant. <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke. <laughs> okay, let's go to some more uh, serious problems. No, that was <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we had to solve this problem during one of uh, national. Uh, but, but, but you can prove that Black's last move was G5, is that the point? Yes, can we you have prove to prove. Right. But these problems uh, don't appear at uh, the competitions. Okay, now it's time to make a draw. Why to play and, and why to play and draw? Yes, why to play and draw? Silence in the studio. <laughs> the composer is quite famous, Leonid Kubel. Yes. If that's pronounced right, he's quite a famous composer. Yes, one of the most composer. famous uh, mm. study composers, and not only. So you have uh, plenty of material down, you have plenty of material down. Yes, and you're looking for some checks. Knight A7, somebody said in our audience, I think. Yes, so we can go. I mean, Knight A7 is probably the only move. King C4. Because King A4 was made in one, yeah? Knight King A4 was knight, um, knight made B6 in one. Was made. I, I will show this yep. to the audience. Uh, sure. Okay, so this is the position. Not P6, I go King C5. Uh, I take on T5. And I'm escaping. Yes, if Black takes a D5 pawn, his, uh, his king's getting away. Any other ideas here for white? <laughs> Elizabeth, is that you? White yeah, should stay on mate? Elizabeth Pets, they're trying to stay on mate. So do you have the solution? No, I just tell you the end of the solution. <laughs> 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 and the end is stay on mate. She but thinks it's stay on mate. Right. But there are so many pieces. Yes, mm. but you can give all of them. <laughs> Uh, not necessarily, uh, because still uh, in at the end, there is still the search on C1 remaining, and also the bishop on E1 is hanging. So hmm. it's and there's also pass pawn on C3. Yeah. So we need a special move here. Long move, bishop A5. But okay, let's try to calculate this. I take on A7. I mean, I have to. Bishop a5 threatens b4 checkmate. Yes, bishop a5 threatens b4. So the only move is queen a7. Right, okay. Keep going. Oh, I see in the answer. It's very nice. Let's see four. Mm. And, and then whoops, I have no moves. Hey, Liz, you were right. Mm. Look at so this. So look at this. I give have a wind. I mean, almost have a wind. And suddenly, there's a stalemate on the <laughs> board. Very nice. Very nice. Fantastic. Okay, so let's 
Go on. <laughs> nice tell me, Tim. That's great. Are these all favorites of yours that you've chosen for us tonight, or uh, how did you I choose mean, these ones? Th this is a favorite, uh, one of my favorite studies, hmm. and I mean the, the previous one with Stalemate because I mean the final position is just amazing. I mean with, with so many pieces, you are, you are able to put a Stalemate on the board. Yes. And it was like, you know, the guy lived like 80 years ago, and it, yeah, in non-computer era, and to, to, ima to create such a problem is right. just something amazing for me. Yes. Okay, so next position. Oh, this is by my friend, Mr. Afek. Yeah, Johan I know Afek personally. Nice man. I agree. Nice man. Of course, there's, this should be the position. So tell us what the problem is here. Uh, the problem I is why to play and win? No? Why to play and win? We have two knights and the pawn against two dangerous black pawns. This is the problem for a master to solve. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Why to play and win, Nigel? Nigel Short has just walked in. The embarrassing thing is like we had this, uh, this task actually like some months ago in the national camp, but we don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> This problem is, you had this problem? We had this problem, like, you don't remember we had this, you remember it. We Actually, had I've had to solve this problem as well. Mm -hmm. But it was, it wasn't difficult. It took me like three minutes. Three <laughs> minutes, <laughs> I think. Which one? Okay, I draw Chito. Uh, this is a nice try. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yes, the try is uh, when you, you play the move which may be good, but it's not because of the rotation. And it's called the try. Okay, that's all. Okay. No, I just short stand it. So, could you share your answer with us? All right, so I play knight h f1. Okay, I told you to. H4. H4. Can we have you start again, Nigel? Does that work? Uh, uh, probably. G1, G1 queen. King F7. That is correct. And that's why you are Grandmaster. Thank you. Nigel, for sure. <laughs> the guy who beat the in this Very tournament. Good. So, yes. Uh, knight oh, HF1, well. and <laughs> at the end, the queen is chopped, and that is in Zurzwang. Wow. Yes, so I will quickly show the rotation of knight HF4. I play here F1 queen, so I give out one of my pawns, and I play King Chito. So I want to take, I may trade either pawn on H3 or knight on F1. So white goes h4, king f1, h5, king g2, and both pawns will reach the last rank. Yeah, and it'll be true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one. Hmm. So now it's time for some non-TTP problems. 
So let's move to the help mates. I was very impressed with Nigel getting that yeah. so quickly, I have to say. Yeah, so very impressed. I don't know, have, uh, has anybody from here watched a lot of the names at uh, the last uh, movie from the trilogy? There was this Apple of um, Pronto, uh, Tenetor, which was the case of one. Lord of the Rings. Now one was Lord of the Rings. So anyway, uh, this was the scene when uh, I don't want to, you know, to say don't think about the mo uh, from the movie. But as far as I remember, Gondor was like the last fortress, and they had to fight. It's called Ordos. So it's like why this Ordos and black. You know, it's the kingdom of Kronto. And Black King went crazy. So the soldier asked, need some help from Ogres. So it says, we need some help. You, ha you can catch this guy. We I don't care. We don't catch this guy. So what is help, mate? We need your help. Are you saying this position was in the movie? No, it wasn't, wasn't in the movie. movie. No, it yeah, wasn't in the right. movie. But I want to. <laughs> I wanted to make some comparison. Oh, okay. So because it's also so easy to you know to explain helmets and self-mates. So right. What I'm trying to say. Black begin to begin. It's helmet in two. So. We want. White to give mate on certain move. And this right. there's only one, exact way to do this. Help mate in two, right. Black starts. Yes. And white gives mate on his second move. So it goes like black moves, then white, then black, then white. And it's mate. Hmm. Anyone in the audience? Yeah, six and two. Yeah. So mm. you have to say uh, the uh, whole variation. Three and six, three, five, two, three, that Very is good. correct. Who got the answer? Who's that? I can't see, sorry. Hey, Paul, yeah? Very good. So, uh, actually, let's move on to the next. Uh, Could you just show the position. Can we just show? Queen f6. Okay, Queen f6. White goes knight c5. Whoops, I planned the root. But no, I want black king to, to get mated. So queen b2, and white can give mate. Very nice. So this is like cooperation. So next problem will be uh, similar with a small difference. Hmm. <laughs> and again, help mate in two. Yes. Oh, let's, think about this. let's think about this. Let's think about this. I've made a little change. On the end, you have to sell. You have to set the whole solution. The yeah, the solution. Six, no money to competition. Yeah. If I may interrupt, of course. No so. money to uh, competition. Uh, we have to write in helmets. We have to write the whole variation until the magnetic move. Exactly. <coughs> Very good. So just I will show quickly. Beautiful. And now we can go to the next problem. So there will be another version of the same one. Who composed these problems? Do we know? Uh, unfortunately, I I I couldn't find the name of hmm. the guy. Uh, so. Perfect. Very good. Very, Very fast. Excellent. Excellent. 
So now you're getting the idea. Mm. So the next one. <laughs> 496. Uh, no, there's still <laughs> one piece to go. <laughs> bishop. There will be bishop. A uh, little spoiler. Mm. So there's the bishop. Keep going, Mike. Keep going. Knight e1. Bishop a2. Knight c2. Perfect. Very good. Bishop c4, knight c1. Bishop a2, knight c2. Fantastic. Okay. Hey, there's some smart people in this room. We got I'm a smart so audience. Uh, I'm really su surprised, but in positive way. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, of pawn, course, yeah, pawn. of course. <laughs> oh, I found it. Yes, yes, I yes. found it. Maybe it's still on the other side. Go on, Nigel, you can say it. Well, okay. It's, uh, I've seen a5, it. Rook B3, yes. Rook five, mate. Perfect. Very good. Now you can solve for B3. Yeah. Don't play like this tomorrow, Nigel. <laughs> 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 okay, so. Uh, so the next problem, I will not ask you to solve this. The next one, the next problem is typical for solving competitions. So normally we have. I think these problems are a bit perverted. You know, the. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a bit like. Offended, a little chess, I understand. <laughs> but. You know what I mean? It's a bit kinky, this oh. stuff. Nigel's uh, always, uh, <laughs> always got an angle on these things, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you find? <laughs> <laughs> is it easy? Uh, so. <laughs> uh, normally. Uh, so normally uh, we have the problems uh, with two sol or more solutions, and the solutions are, are have some contain some analogy. So in, in this position, the first solution is take on the siege, root to siege, root to siege. So I lost. Uh, the, what is the what is, is the problem? Help yeah, mate in two. Help mate in two. Two solutions. Oh. And so I will show the solution to you. So the first solution is take on these seats, root g6, root p6, ah, before mate. Nice. So the rotate lo yeah. the bishop, and there's some nice pin. Very beautiful. And the uh, other solution is bishop d3 uh, from the beginning. Nice. Bishop takes d3, bishop e2, bishop b 5 Oh, oh that's fantastic. Nine. That's beautiful. That's really nice. Mm. That's very nice. Yes. Uh, it's then perverted. Though. Okay. <laughs> so now it's time for something <laughs> very nice. similar to Kelvin, but not exactly. So I will talk about self mates. No, that's not perverted, Nigel. So <laughs> when you say mate in one, we give mate in one, so we remote queen or lord and it's mate. Right. But if we want to get self mate in one, then we want to mate ourselves. <laughs> so we play queen p7, and black doesn't want to, but has to take right. on p7 and, and give mate. Right. This is a self mate. Yes, this is a self mate. And again, some problems about this. I thought that I hope they are simple for you. So this is self-made in two. Uh, so we we want to force black to mate the white king. And you want to use this two pawns on G3 and H2. Mm. So it would be great to 
if Clark would uh, had to pl uh, play Cheeto Mate. Right. And how to force this? You have two moves. White to play and force checkmate in two moves. I don't see it yet, self mate. Once again, the basic rules which I mentioned at the beginning of the session, like launch moves, sacrifices, can be applied to all the problems. Hmm. It's difficult because it looks like Black can just move his knight around and you can't force... Uh, yes. In only two moves, how could you force Black to checkmate you? Anyone in our audience? Anyone got any ideas? <laughs> Yes, queen b8 is the, the exactly. So we play long move, queen b8, the longest one, and then, you move, uh, and then for instance, if I throw to e8, then you can simply take this try, and black oh. has to play g2 mate. If black knight to to throws to h5, then we can make some nasty pin. <laughs> and a turn black has to give mate. And if black knight throws to e6 or to 5 or to f5, doesn't matter because white has the same reply. Uh, queen c8. Queen c8. And once again, black has to give mate. That's remarkable. Okay, try into the next one. These are self mates. Yeah, yes. Okay, this will be last self mate, I promise you. The last so one. So no more stage uh, problems. This is also self mate in two. So white moves first and forces black to mate on his second move. Exactly. Well, black only has one move, which is king. No, no, the move is stalemate. Black sorry. has it's no stalemate. move right now. Black is in stalemate. <coughs> so we have to move something in order to release, uh, to give some space to something. The best thing would be to give some space to the king. These are quite hard if you haven't seen them before. Do you know the concept of... Well, it depends. ...sort of forcing uh, yourself to be checkmated. Do we have a suggestion, sorry, in the audience? Queen, queen d4 check. I take with the king. King takes. Right. Yeah, that's like you have the right idea, but I think the first move is wrong. Try and make black play d5 checkmate. Yes, that is the perfect idea to force Black to play d5. So, so what you want here is to give a square to the g for the, to the king, mm -hmm. for instance d4, and then Black may be able to give mate with moving the pawn. Right. And the question is how to do this. Uh, 
Go to the bed, please. Queen D4 check. King takes. But white has to make a second move. The problem is if you play queen d4 check, king takes d4, e4, then black can take on passant. That's the problem. And it's no longer checkmate. King e6, you can play king d7. I want to repeat one more time, because normally I would move a green life stamina like this, and I can play move like d3, but black doesn't have, doesn't have to give mate. So you want to force this mate. Because here black can play king d3 or king d5. Okay. Nigel's got it. Yeah. Got the answer. Okay. Tell us, yeah. Nigel. So it's queen h4. Queen h4. Yeah. And after king d4. But e4. Go d4. Still you're going to take. No. No. Unfortunate. Unfortunately, I mean, nice luckily you can't, <laughs> because the pawn is pinned. Pinned. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice solution. Yeah. And d5. And d5 is checkmate. Beautiful. Yes. So the last one I prepared is my favorite study. The last one, okay, and then we're going to have a very special and second I, guest. I won't force you to solve. The, I I don't want to ask you to solve with this because it took me like fifteen minutes. We still have the first one as well. And the first one we still haven't <laughs> the answer to, but maybe we can uh, even. Uh, okay, I will give the solution to the first one after this one. Your favorite study. Yes. And Great. I've never heard of this man, Oleg Pervakov. It's a new name to me. It's a well-known uh, Russian uh, jazz composer. Right, yeah. I've never heard of him, yeah. And... Is he, is he a contemporary? Is he still alive? Or is this an yes, old he is still alive. Right. He is still composing. Great. And you publishing new... He came to Vecanzella as well. Already? Yeah. Sorry, he played in... Vic no, no, he came to Vecanzella. He came to Vecanzella, no, he came to Tzatzis still. Fantastic. Okay, the solving competition in Vikings every year, which Africa organizes. Anyway, so you, so actually so you I know this guy, great. Actually, I couldn't uh, participate in one uh, you know, to participate in this uh, solving uh, study day. Because you were here? I mean, yes. There's is, this is an <laughs> I couldn't come here. Uh, there. Okay, so let's push ahead here. Yeah? So what is the stipulation uh, for this problem? Okay, so I won't ask you to solve this because it looks strange at first glance. So why to move and win? I mean, as I said, it took me like 15 minutes, so I won't ask you to solve this. I will show the solution, so... And I will tell you why I love this uh, puzzle. So, the best reason I love this puzzle is because of this... Uh, interesting, I mean, not typical... Uh, uh, setup. Right. I mean, you have a every piece on the first three lines. Right. And it looks like we are trying to play for the mate. mate and uh, no, it's why to, to win. Just why win. to play and win? win. Yes, to win. To play and win yeah. So, you can start with queen takes I want queen to play. <laughs> I don't want to play on a door. Queen takes <laughs> queen, maybe. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> So from just play point of view, we, can, we have two candidates, like take on a2 and to play queen c1. And queen a2 doesn't work because of c1, queen, knight d3, and queen c7. So that's why we are going to give check. And if black king captures the knight, then it's the knight. Check, check, check. Check, check, mate. Oh, mate, already, yeah. I mean, that would be easy. Hmm. <laughs> but I can do this. <coughs> okay, I have to take the bishop. Again, it looks like white is just 
Čiaš viņu tev, tev oponent. Jau ti tur čekri. Ah. So you have to play knight f2. Sorry, can we just... Oh, sorry, to check. Just show us if queen takes d2, what happens? Uh, if queen takes d2, uh, then promote the queen. Right. Queen a2. Okay. And nice. the simplest move is queen d2. Hmm, nice. And stalemate. <laughs> Why is stalemate a draw? <laughs> I don't know. Why is stalemate a draw, asked Nigel. Okay, so let's... <laughs> so here, what does white play? White plays knight f2. Check. Let's check. Check. Black has to play rt1. And right. now, it's there is a... Very strange position. A little, let's see it's strange. So, when I first so try to solve this, my first thought was, I played queen g5. I mean, like, normal candidate. Uh, I mean, normal. Mm -hmm. Black to most the queen. I give check. Give another check. Give <laughs> just, I'm giving a couple of checks. King d1. And I win the queen. And piece up, pawn up. And piece up, pawn up. And I'm nice. happy. But then I idealized. After queen b2, <laughs> there is another experiment. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> so I started getting frustrated. So that's why it took me like another five minutes to solve this. Only five minutes more? Yes, five minutes more. So the solution is quiet but really shocking. So, so the true idea of this problem was to use the power of the pawn and knight. So we go knight to three. Knight to d3. Let's see one. And you play knight to two. Oh. Oh. oh, that's amazing. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. And after king to e2, the decisive unit is the b-pawn. Is the b-pawn. Beautiful. That's astonishing. Just take us back, please, a couple <laughs> of moves to where, to where uh, this happened. Okay, so it happens like here. So Fantastic. I Fantastic. Okay, we'll forgive you for showing us this one. Yeah. <laughs> knight to d3. Just knight show us again. Three. Knight to d3 and black. Dark has to take on c1. Because queen f4 is made. Or queen something. f4 is made. And the quiet move. That's astonishing. Threatening knight. Threatening knight if made. And people say two knights can't win against the king. Or Actually, they can. They, well, they can, of course, yeah. So that's all I wanted to show you. I uh, will come back to the, the first, first one. Problem. Amazing, some amazing I positions. I hope that some. Uh, spectators watching us through the uh, website managed to find the solution. If not, I will present it to you right now. Hmm. Back yeah, to so the first I position. Have this knight and train. So this I was white to play and win, wasn't it? White to play and win. So this is like typical chess problem. So that's why I wanted to. Keep it, keep it for the, to show it um, at the end. Right. So, basically you want to win with the pipon. But black also has some pawn to move. Uh, so, the question is who goes first? So the solution is, I give check. King h4, I go here. I, am, I, I planted it to the knight. <laughs> and if to take this knight, then I go b6. And at the end, you, right. uh, you win the queen. Okay. But, but, of course, black knight may get also to cheeky. Check. So check. King c5. 95. So two knights are simu 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 
simultaneously. Simultaneously, thank you. Uh, uh, Entire attack. So now oh, I, I can see a stalemate coming. Hmm. Take p6, g3, p7, g2, and now, now, now. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Just to avoid some stalemate. You'll have to show us what happens if pawn equals queen instead. I have to show it. Because I guess people ask why. King to f4. Hmm. The black kings go to f4 and queen g1 stalemate. Very nice. Onto promotion. And then promotion, once again. Hmm. Okay. And that was so after b8 equals rook, black is lost. Yes. Yeah. Easily. Easily. Easily lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what can we say? Well, thank you very much, Kasper. There have been some fantastic positions. Thank you. I hope you, I ha I thought, uh, hope you liked this. Yeah, I think we can show our appreciation for, for this. Okay, well, we have a second uh, part of the show. It's going to be Grandmaster Nigel Short. He's going to show us one of his earlier games from the tournament, so that'll be coming up soon. So don't, don't leave us. And Casper, uh, thank you very much. And how's the tournament going? Thank just very, very quickly, just in one minute. How's uh, the chess going here? Today I made a draw against uh, Black, I mean Black Horse is it at the base. I mean, I mean the, uh, Jonathan Karlstedt. Cross that, okay, right, yeah. Thanks to my today's game, ma uh, managed to ma make a uh, second GM norm. Oh, he made a GM norm by drawing with you? Yes, and right. I mean, unfortunately, I, I did, I, I've given him some help, hmm. so I made a draw, which was right. enough for him. Okay, well. But still, I couldn't, I think I couldn't do better. Well, you made him happy and you made us happy. So that's... Yes, huh? I think. So, a good day. Yeah, so <laughs> now I have five and a half, and yeah. I'm still fighting. fighting. Good. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thank right. you. And thank you again for this. Thank you. So we'll see Nigel shortly. <laughs>
Welcome back. And here I am joined by Grandmaster Nigel Short. Nigel having a fantastic event so far. Well, so very so good event. Yeah. yeah. So, f so far, so, yeah. so very good. I was a bit disappointed with today's game, but uh, sometimes it happens. You know, you don't get uh, what you, you want. Uh, but uh, still two rounds. You had white against me yeah, today. I had yeah. Did look, you press? I didn't even see no, the game. No, really. I, I didn't. I, uh, I, in fact, I got a worse position very quickly when mm. it ended in a uh, repetition. I was af afraid to stand seriously worse if I didn't right. if I didn't take it. But um, okay, look, yep. a draw against Michael Adams is is all right. I'm just disappointed the way it happened. That was okay. that, wa that was all. And at some point, I I need to win a another game mm -hmm. or even two but I, I need yes. to win at least a, a yeah. game uh, from my remaining two right um, so look um, I'm not complaining about my score here I'm having a very good tournament I know you like this event a lot anyway yeah right? I do I do um, you know it's a very friendly atmosphere I was here at mm. the first one that's right I've won the tournament three times um, I suspect Hikaru Nakamura has uh, rather better chances at winning it four times than I do. Um, well, you're in the frame. But, uh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm i not thinking so much in, in those terms. I'm just trying to play some some good chess. And, mm. so, and so far, I've been doing okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I want to show you, uh, let's say, uh, my most attractive game of the, the tournament, not... Um, the one that people will uh, remember, which uh, <laughs> uh, was my game against Fabiano, but uh, this is this is certainly my prettiest game against Sergei Grigorians, uh, and that was in round uh, four, is it? Yeah. Okay, okay. so you're white. So, so I played uh, knight f3, um, and a um, little bit of skirmishing here. Wasn't quite sure what was happening. We ended up after a few moves in, in a, a semi Slav. Um, I can't say I really play this because I'm, I'm an amateur D4 player. Mm. Uh, basically, that's the problem if uh, you've been playing E4 basically all your life, you yep. don't get enough experience. The last few y years, I've been trying to broaden my repertoire but um, and I think in general that's a very good idea but uh, I'm lacking a little bit in uh, experience of uh, certain positions so mm. okay um, bishop d3 um, this has all been seen there are moves like e5 this is this is uh, one move but d takes c4 um, is another very much a main line. And uh, had you prepared for this game, Nigel? This no, this I hadn't prepared it actually. Uh, I must say, um, I was much more familiar with the move bishop b7 here, um, <coughs> which at least I have some experience of in, in blitz games. I play quite a mm. lot of blitz on, on playchess.com, so you know I, I had uh, experience there. Queen e7 is another move that does quite well. There are various uh, subtleties. I, I had a discussion with Boris Gelfand ab about this. I mean, he knows these positions very well. He said they're very, very subtle indeed. Um, I certainly didn't have the the knowledge or the intricacies um, there. So a6, well, it's a tempo. I mean, because sometimes a6 is is not useful. Obviously, here black wants to play c5 mm. at some point. So uh, there are other options. A rook d1 is, is is one move here, but I played in a direct way e4. Okay. Um, and strangely enough, this kind of position. Um, it looks uh, a little bit um, like uh, you can sometimes get these positions from e4 openings. There is um, there was <coughs> a game um, Fisher against uh, Portish from Santa Monica, nineteen 
1966, uh, which actually came from a Brea, which was a little bit similar to this in terms of the, um, the structure. That was something in my mind. I couldn't remember who the black player was, but I remember mm. Fisher was white. Of course, the bishop is over on b3 rather than on e2, right. but the, the, there are many similarities with the... Uh, did that come to mind during the game? It did. It did come mm. to mind during the game. So I was thinking about that, you know, various setups. Bishop g5, um, it's a little bit a little bit crude. I'm not sure this is the best move, um, but it looks very natural. It's a natural move. You develop a piece. I mean, if you don't know the the subtleties, the finesses is the, the sort of move that you might end up playing. Um, here drives it away, and now Black starts to to play mm. um, on the dark squares and. You need to think about the position here, where, where are, you know, white's advantage, uh, and, you know, where is, is black uh, situated well. Well, white, uh, first thing to observe, white has a majority on the, the king side. So uh, there are certain moves that you would like to get in. So f4 uh, would be a very desirable move, mm. but... Queen c7 is not only protecting the c-pawn, it's controlling a lot of squares um, as, as well. So here th there is some um, threat to my h-pawn. I don't want to play h3 in case uh, g5 comes well, at, at, at a, uh, an awkward moment. Mm. So I play king h1. Okay. Um, and now, ag again, we see um, rook e8. Uh, this is a very natural move, putting the rook on the, um, on the half-open file, attacking e4. And this has come, of course, from a, I mean, by transposition. It's not a ready, it's a, it's a, it's a d4 opening right. by, by transposition. Uh, but we have a typical problem of e4 openings, which is that the, the, the e-pawn is weak. Hmm. And uh, it's funny, I mentioned that to Boris Gelfand, he said he never really thought about it. <laughs> um, Petrov defence, uh, the Berlin, the, Berlin it, um, the Nidorf is another one actually, is right. uh, very often uh, that the e-pawn is, is, yeah. is, is weak. Black plays a6, b5, hmm. b4. You know, and sometimes and you have to play f three often. Yeah, and sometimes rook c eight and rook takes c three, mm. and and uh, um, the e pawn is 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 weak. So white's is game is in its last throws. <laughs> Isn't that the crit? Yeah, Not that's uh, who said that. I think it was um, wasn't it Breyer? It could have been Breyer, I think. Yeah. Was it Breyer or Retty? Retty, maybe. Uh, anyway, one then. of those one mm. of those guys, one of those uh, dudes. Um, <laughs> so okay. I played a3 to stop b4. There's a th threat to my pawn. So what I want to do is is sort of provoke c5 at least so I can get uh, the d5 square under control. So I, I played a3 just to hold him up for the, mm. for the, for the time being. Um, the next move, um, my opponent had been thinking for quite a long time, so it was clear he was also not terribly familiar with this this opening. Uh, the next few moves came quite quickly. Um, bishop e5, which is natural, attacking the knight. I bring my one remaining piece, undeveloped piece, into the game. So, so rook d1. Sure. And now c5, knight f5. And if uh, some things uh, with b4, I, I've got knight d5 now. And he played knight, d, uh, knight b6 incredibly quickly. And I suddenly realised that, uh, actually, I, I, I don't know, my, I, I wasn't really thinking too deeply at this point. Knight b6, I don't know why it came as a slight surprise to me, but uh, I, it did. 
It shouldn't have done. It covers d5, of course. It covers d5, it threatens, bishop takes it. It's probably the first move I would think of when black, I was, mm. you know, playing black. And I, I suddenly realised that uh, my position is, in fact, quite uh, precarious um, now because I can very, very easily end up with a, uh, a much inferior position if he gets to play bishop takes f5. And he's covered the d5 square, and I don't really have any sort of sensible hmm. retreat. So I was just looking at this position and um, thinking that maybe I, I messed up, and then I, hmm. I had a you know, after a few minutes, I just had a flash, and I, I realized I've got something which is looks very, very strong here. Mm. And I played knight 6, g7. And... Um, How much time did you spend on that move, Nigel? Not, not a huge amount of time. Uh, I mean, once I saw the idea, I got very excited about it. And uh, it is, uh, in fact... A Let's say it is a very good move, but it's not the best move. No. <laughs> and um, when I got back to my room, I was kind of curious, uh, as always, to see what the the engine is saying mm. about it. And uh, yeah, knight g7 is good. Uh, you know, ordinarily you would say it's actually quite a brilliant move. Right. You know, <laughs> mm. but. Um, the correct move is, in fact, f4. And after bishop takes c3, I should then play knight takes g7. <laughs> and this somehow is not that easy to, to see conceptually. Um, because, um, I mean, Topalov was here. I, I, saw one of his master classes oh, and he right. was talking about obvious moves. Yes, that's the, sort right, of yeah. the sort of mistakes you make in mm. calculation when, you know, people do something and you expect a certain response. And when a guy takes a piece, you know, just sort of straight off, yeah. uh, you're not thinking that your next move is immediately to sacrifice another, another piece. Mm. Uh, but it's absolutely crushing, devastating sacrifice, and um, and you'll see why this is um, much better than uh, than w what I played. What I played was good, um, <laughs> and I'm very happy with it. That you know that I saw yes. the idea, but I just didn't get the the uh, the best execution of this. So, um, yeah, he takes, and I just start to, to move forward. So if uh, he captures, I can simply take here and uh, move like queen d2, and I'm going to capture mm. uh, on f4 yes. with a raging attack, basically, and against, a, you know, h4, h4 check. check. Yeah. <laughs> Or rook takes f4 first and then right, and yeah. then h4 check. So that's just for uh, just to show that one. <laughs> Which is not met by queen takes h4 <laughs> check because it's pinned. So that that that's um, a nice one. Um, so he if he plays uh, here, this would be a transposition to possible transposition. As you the played along. the other yeah. move order, yes. Yeah, and this is this is really uh, killing with this threat. And also, I've got rook d3 and rook g3. These mm. are these are very typical um, uh, things that I've got. Uh, in, in this position. So instead he played bishop d4, which he would not have been able to play with my knight on uh, f5. Right. Uh, and here I've got this other move, which is, which is nice. It's a little um, mm. uh, trick right. exploiting the, the pin. 
So obviously he can't take this because the queen takes queen. And um, I saw a bit more than this. No, I was going to ask, is this where you yeah, stopped your calculation? Yeah, well, a, a bit more. Um, because there were two moves uh, I was uh, considering mainly. Rook a7, which is what he did in knight c4. I think knight c4 is a better defence. Um, in fact, I know it's a better defence because I, I checked it later. Mm. These were the moves I was uh, thinking about. But I uh, thought that uh, yeah, I was going to have a lot of uh, play anyway. I have things with e5, knight g4, and rook takes c4 is even possible there. And just really? After knight yeah, c4? Yeah, and just, mm. just playing. Just play. Um, the um, the engine. Um, I mean, th th these were the things I was thinking about during the game, and I noticed actually when when you analyse with a very very powerful engine, it, it was saying uh, at thirty two ply or whatever it was saying equals. <laughs> so it was saying essentially that with absolutely perfect defence from this position, black mm. can hold. All right. Uh, um, mm. But in reality, white has a, a raging attack, mm. and it's almost impossible for a human being to defend yes. a position like this accurately with the king uh, so exposed. So he played uh, rook a7 and the e5, and and this was um, more or less. Uh, all I had calculated when I went knight g7 because I saw uh, it was not possible for him to take. Uh, if king f8, I go right. in like Errol Flynn. <laughs> uh, and uh, if he goes here, then simply queen d3, right. and my queen swings over mm. and it's uh, and it's mate. So. Um, you know, and having seen this, I just thought this has got to be um, this has got to be huge. Mm. I mean, White has just got a fantastic position, and I'm barely any material down. So well, that's right. If you've got two yeah, pawns anyway. Yeah. So okay, knight f d five comes. Uh, I drop the rook back. And um, bishop f5 is, is not possible. That would be a very nice move. It's not possible, of course, because I've got here check. Yes. So he can't do that. Um, he dropped the, the, the king back. And now a nice little move, uh, which is queen d2. And I start getting these, these various um, uh, threats with f5 and queen takes h6. So I'm also threatening on d5. Mm. He played f5, um, you know, after some thought. If knight c4, you just drop back. I drop back to c1, that's right. And, um, and I'm coming with f5. Also, rook takes d5 and bishop f6 check. So I've just mm. got uh, um, this, this incredible attack. Um, and he played f5, and I took. And at this moment, um, you know, once I played this, we, we actually now have material equality. I mean, even you could argue white is maybe even a fraction mm. up on material. Uh, but I've got a, a beautiful coordinated position. Yep. Um, and... Um, and he's still trying to defend, and uh, you know the king is obviously exposed. So he played a couple of moves. Now queen h5 becomes a threat, attacking the rook, <coughs> attacking the h pawn. So that's why he went here, and now bishop b5. So I'm actually material up, and the advantage of this, uh, I mean, I not only take a pawn, but the bishop attacks the rook. I cover the squares on the d file. Yes. He goes over, and now my rook comes onto this uh, open file, the uh, highway into his position. <laughs> um, he can defend better. Q 
Queen b7 would have been actually the only move to continue. White has a massive advantage. Right. I have no doubt I would have converted the game. But queen b7 is basically the only move to... Would you have had to trade queens I've got queen to, b7? Yeah, I'm going to have to trade queens. Right. And, and then a4. And then a4. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's a very, very substantial advantage. Uh, mm. But that, that's the only way to continue. It said he went queen a5 bit short of time and now it's game over queen in defending the bishop attacking his bishop he attacked my rook and now rook d6 and now there is no longer sure. uh, any defense and nice so bishop on, on h4 controls and, the, and <laughs> the bishop on h4 and that's the key point it uh, defends backwards uh, the, the e1 square otherwise I'd be mm. back rank mated so mm. that that is my nicest attacking game of the um must have given uh, you great pleasure no, that game. Honestly, honestly i you know it's it's one of those things in your your you're thinking away and um you're not totally happy with the position and suddenly you get this idea you know mm. this sort of burst of inspiration and then it goes very quickly yeah. once you've got once you see knight g7 f4 and then uh, you know, everything changed. And that knight takes b5 little yeah, tactic. Yeah, that's a, a fairly easy thing. Mm. But you, you've just got to get the first idea um, with knight g7. And, yes. and then. Um, and amazing that in fact it wasn't even the best move, knight takes g7. Yeah, f4 was yeah, much stronger. That's, and f4 was uh, even, even stronger. But uh, mm. it was good that I, I saw the concept. It's the sort of thing that, uh, you know, Michal Tal was famous for these sort of mm. sacrifices. Um, you know, not really speculative. Would you use that word to describe that sacrifice? Speculative? Not, not really, because I think I have so much comp compensation. I yes. mean, it's just, you, it's just uh, you have to see it uh, conceptually. And uh, it's a little bit speculative. With, with the correct plan, with, if he's going 94, I would have been sacrificing material and going forward, but I, I, I just felt uh, that White's compensation was at least adequate. Hmm. And, um, you know, and the, yeah. the engine uh, agrees. I, in fact, I thought it was more than adequate. The, the engine says, you know, perfect defense, black, right. bla black can save himself. Okay. But uh, I've no idea how, by the way. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. I mean, and we're, we're, we're not playing correspondence chess here. Nice, I don't want to keep you too long because yep. it's a little bit late yep. and I know yep. um, you've it's got a big game tomorrow. But maybe if we had a couple of questions from the audience, if you wouldn't yeah, mind, sure. before we wrap up for Nigel. Um, but anyway, first of all, for that game, round of applause. Okay. Really okay. fantastic. Okay. No questions. No questions, Nigel. I can't believe it. Any questions at all? I have one. Mike. Yeah. Nigel, a few years ago, you made it back to the top 50 in the world at the age of 50. Do you think you'll make it to the top 60 when you're 60? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, I feel okay uh, at the moment. I, I've had sort of ups and downs um, in the last... Um, uh, two or three years and uh, uh, for me uh, the absolute nadir was the Trumzo Olympiad and um, you know I went along to the Olympiad I was trying to play good chess but I was also involved as the uh, ECF uh, delegate uh, I was trying to get rid of this um, this criminal, uh, uh, Kirzan Ilyum Zhinov, and um, uh, that didn't work out. Uh, and um, I wasn't really focused on the on the chess. I played terribly badly, and I, I let down the team. And I was uh, I decided I was going to quit uh, with the politics um, at that time. And that was actually the sort of beginning of my come back and I had a good tournament in the Isle of Man uh, after that and I had a few good results and then it was down again but my 
from about the middle of last year, I've been playing well again. I had a fantastic result in Iran, mm. uh, this tournament in Anzali, where I scored eight and a half out of ten, um, with some very, very good games, actually. Uh, some, you know. Um, which was you showed us in yeah, Morocco, and I yeah, remember. I sh I sh yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, in, in Morocco, uh, yeah, I, sh I showed some of that. And some of those games were, were really good. And, yeah, I, and I, I feel I'm sort of back in... I played okay at the uh, Olymp Olympiad. I played quite well, not outstandingly. I had some good games. Um, and I managed to win the, the British knockout, which wasn't the... Um, Easiest. Uh, I think the the key things are uh, maintaining uh, interest in the game. You've got to enjoy chess uh, very much, and you've got to work on the game. And you also, I think, you have to uh, think a lot uh, more about energy. And uh, that's one thing I, I've realised with uh, aging that. Um, Sleep is extremely important. Uh, I need to I need to rest uh, regularly because um, yeah I don't have the same energy I, I did when I was uh, twenty. So I think if if I maintain interest uh, in the game I'm working on chess, then I can play at a high level. You know I mean how high that level is. I don't know. Um, well, you beat you know, Fabi. You I, beat I, Fabi. I, it was good enough for the world number two a, a couple of uh, days ago. So you know, I I, I can be dangerous. I, uh, you know, mm. even even to the to the best. Mm. So um, um, and now that uh, Victor Korchnoi has left us, I you mm. know I I feel I should. Um, uh, step into his shoes <laughs> as the um, you know the the dinosaur who you know bites mm. some people and uh, um, yeah I mean of course he had a few decades on me but um, chess has, has changed and, and of course Victor was um, someone really really special um, yeah I'd like to get back uh, over 2700 that would be nice uh, won't be that far off on the next list, and uh, it, it could could be could be possible. Um, What's your peak rating, Nigel? Yeah, my peak rating is not very high actually. Um, the funny thing is that my rapid chess rating—I I haven't seen the latest one, but I think I was something like twenty-second on the rapid chess. So I, I, mm. rapid chess suits me very well because our uh, blitz is too fast and. Um, Classical chess, I just get tired with long games. Mm. You know, I'm okay for two or three hours, and then the longer the game goes on, the more I feel my energy going down. So, so rapid chess, um, 23rd, um, apparently, mm. uh, on the latest, but I didn't see the latest uh, list, it was 22 before, so 23rd, uh, which means, you know, I can play a, a, a fair game yeah. still, of course. Yeah. Mm. Peter, you have a question? Yeah, I was wondering, uh, how do you work on your chess these days? And to, uh, how is it different from, say, 20 years ago? Um, you know, one thing I find uh, which is uh, very useful is because I'm uh, basically a very lazy person, uh, I, I just think that the, the tools that we have at our disposal are that much uh, easier to use and they're, they're so, so uh, more powerful these days that it, it's actually quite easy to work. So uh, I think I have a, a good eye for spotting the weaknesses of my opponents. So uh, if I do the work I can um, uh, at least, uh, you know, try and steer the games in into directions that uh, they won't uh, they won't like. So 
I think those things have, have changed, and you know, I just find using the computer a lot, lot easier these days, just because the uh, the software is much better and the engines are much much better. So um, you could analyze very complicated positions rather easily, and um, also you see uh, it, it improves your tactics. Uh, I mean, there are all sorts of hidden. Um, ideas. My game yesterday, you know, there was that brilliant uh, double bishop sacrifice which Peter Svidler missed and, you know, looking at these sort of um, uh, tactical ideas, um, I think um, that helps a lot. I think that's, you know, these guys like um, Wesley So, mm. you know, computer generation, uh, a lot of it is, you know, they're using the engines and they see so many different ideas because the engines are th throwing up uh, these these mm. ideas and it helps with the pattern recognition, you know. You, you often get these things or similar things during the game, so... Um, Nigel, do you still work with young players sometimes? I remember some years ago, now, was it, yeah, was it um, Sergei yeah. Karakin came to see you in Greece? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And other yeah, people like I, that? I haven't done it uh, for a while and um, I'm, I'm thinking, um, yeah, I'm actually quite a, in, in a good phase and I, 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 I'm ready to work a bit more hmm. at, at the moment. So it kind of comes and it goes. I always like playing Blitz. I play too much Blitz in an evening after... Uh, after dinner, with a glass of wine <laughs> at my my side, I play some hmm. some some blitz chess. But uh, sometimes it's necessary to do some really serious work, um, and uh, I think I'm ready to to, to work a little bit uh, hmm. more at the moment. I I feel in the I don't always feel in the the, the mood for it. But um, I think I might have a question from my audience. Yep. Mike, do we? I have another one. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the absence of others from our okay. audience. Uh, Nigel, I think you're only two years older than Stuart, so I yeah. presume you two knew each other for a long time. Sure. So yep. this is actually like a double question. Nigel, what was Stuart like when he was 12? And <laughs> Stuart, what was Nigel like when he was 14? <laughs> On the spot there, Nigel. Both of us. I'm, I'm trying to think when I... Uh, really I always lose to Nigel. I've lost to him so many times. Didn't you draw no. one once? Oh, maybe I drew one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did draw Desperate one. Desperate defense. Didn't you draw one? Well, so you, you, draw. Yeah, you drew one. Didn't yeah. you draw in the, was it the Dominican Republic or something? Oh, I got a draw there, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I think I beat you in practically every other game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I, so I, I remember... I look I up to him, of course. I remember I you from... Um, from Brighton, really. Oh, the that's British Championship. Not the British Championship. Oh, the Championship. You'll Play All. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. I mean, you were suffering a little bit. I got a half out of nine in that tournament. Well, yeah, because that's somehow when <laughs> I, I got to know you the the first time. Mm. So I've, I've always liked Stuart. He's a great, great guy. Okay. He's a friend. And, uh, <laughs> and a very good organiser. I think he sort oh. of found his, his way here. So... Mm. Um, I've come to see you in Athens, Nigel. You have indeed. Yeah, we drove to a tournament in Ofri, didn't we? That's right. We even dr drove from yeah from uh, to Athens, a war zone or something, uh, Athens <laughs> up to to Macedonia. Yeah. Uh, so and uh, we've 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 had lots of experiences some together. Scrapes. <laughs> we've had some scrapes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which will go in my autobiography, but <laughs> I, I won't tell you about them this evening. <laughs> We've had some very interesting experiences. Yeah. I was going to ask a question about, uh, apart from yourself, who is the closest person to uh, Tao now? You talk about speculation in your games, in this game you, you demonstrated. Who now, in the modern day era, it's less easy to be speculative, isn't it? But who, who would you say sort of fits the, the bill the most? Yeah, it's all hard to say. Um, there, are, um, there are some very interesting players, but they, you know, they're not exactly Tal-like. I mean, they're, they're, I, so I'm, I'm sort of ducking your, your, your question, really. I mean, players like uh, Richard Rapport mm. and uh, 
uh, Joe Barber is another one who's a kind of very interesting player, and they're they're a little bit erratic actually, uh, but there are some sort of strokes of genius there. Something really un unusual uh, we really, about. We really, we really saying, isn't it? Anybody who, who likes Tull nowadays? Yeah, well, you know, was uh, there's a question of whether Tull was like Tull, um, <laughs> because. Uh, uh, he came like a comet. I mean, he came in the, the late 50s and he had that sort of burst really from 1957 up to winning the World Championship in 1960 where uh, he was unstoppable. But what people forget about Tal is that in the 1970s there was a different mature Tal who didn't lose. I mean, he had incredibly long stretches where he just didn't lose games. I mean, mm. you know, what was he going? 70-odd games higher Something level, like you know. Yeah. And he had, and he had a, there's a, a, a couple of times where he mm. went, had incredibly long periods where he didn't lose a game. And also his chess uh, had matured a lot. He could play, you know, very classical openings and... Uh, yeah, he was not um, always so reckless uh, at at that time. He, he had different different styles. He could play proper chess. So, you know, the, the Tal of the 1970s was um, was a better player, but uh, less thrilling. He always ha had that eye for a. Uh, a brilliant combination, and there, there, there were games that would thrill me even much later games. I, I always remember one. I, I mean, I witnessed it a tournament in in Reykjavik, which, which I, I won a very strong tournament actually, and I started with six out of six, and I won it quite comfortably. But I remember Tal beat Johan Charterson, uh in such a brilliant game. Um, it was breathtaking to see that at the time and there are certain things like that when you've seen games live and um, you think yeah the guys really got it mm. you know there's something exceptional there uh, there was some highly unusual tactics and uh, and it was all sound I mean it's the engines I, I remember Johan was telling me not very long ago actually that he thought that he'd missed a, a draw and he's analysed it again recently and uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> he was getting wiped out <laughs> in, in fact and, and it, it even didn't matter whether he missed a draw, I mean it was just such uh, uh, like a tornado of uh, uh, tactics and uh, he was swept away. Mm. Another question, please, my audience. Yes. Hi, Nigel. Hi, Tony. Um, how s do you think you are stronger or weaker compared to uh, how you performed in the 90s? And how would a 1990 version of Nigel Short do if you had played today? Well, I, I was definitely stronger, uh, you know, in my 20s. And I think... Uh, you know, I've ha I've had a few good years. Um, uh, I I guess 1991 was probably my best year. So I was like 25, 26. Uh, I had only good results in uh, 1991, and I think I even won the Europe uh, Echec Player of the Year. Yeah, subjective thing, but you know. Um, I played played very well. I had the VSB tournament in in Amsterdam, which I uh, tied for first with Salov, in front of Kasparov and Karpov, and uh, I was second in, in Tilburg, uh, behind Kasparov, and then I've forgotten what else. I won the English cha championship as I played Michael Adams today. Mm. Uh, you know, I beat. Uh, Mickey there, and uh, uh, and I had a couple of candidates matches against Gelfand and and uh, 
and Spielman. So, um, yeah, those were my uh, best times. Um, and I was, you know, basically a, a top 10 player from about 21 up until 32. So, in fact, my peak was not uh, that long. Um, so I was, you know, in the top ten for about a, 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 uh, a decade, and yeah, and, and there's been a lot of decline, uh, and there have been little peaks when I get this sort of, um, uh, you know, good form. You you have to work on your chess. Actually, that's the uh, there's no escaping it. You can't just uh, live off your capital. Mm. So you need new ideas and you, you you constantly need to be looking at things otherwise you're just uh, trapped in a in a downward uh, spiral do you work on chess i don't really work uh, a lot on 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 chess uh, i mean i look at chess all the time so i you know i read books and i follow tournaments and i i play blitz so uh, I'm, yep. alwa I'm always involved in chess. It's, it's not as though I'm doing other things. So, um, you know, chess is my life. You have a so great library, Naj, I was going to say. And Fantastic and library. And chess and library. I've got a good library. So, um, and I even look at some of the books sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, um, but you need some systematic work uh, as well. Um, and you need... Energy. Uh, energy is very important. If I look at uh, this this tournament here, and you know, you don't want to make uh, excuses. The, but the first round um, here, I was in huge, huge trouble um, mm. uh, against uh, Peter Lombard. Lombard. Yeah. Lombard. Yeah. Um, and. Um, uh, it was dead lost, and you know you think, how does this happen when you you outrage your opponent by so many points, hundreds of points? I think it's not taking care of myself. Uh, I ended up going to to um, Iran before I I came here, and I d agreed to do it. I was invited as a guest of honor. And I did it under certain uh, um, conditions um, because I was expecting I would take a flight on a GN Airways in an evening and I'd get there and then I'd go to a hotel and this, that and the other. And it just happens that I'd agreed to do this and then a GN cancelled the, the flight or they moved it to two days later. And then I had to go via, I, I just couldn't get to Tehran at a, at a proper time. So, you know, I fly in the evening and I get to my hotel at half past eight in the morning and I haven't slept. And then I go to sleep and then I wake up and then I take another flight off to Rasht and then it's a simul the next day and this, that and the other. And then I have another flight at a god-awful time to London and then you come here and you play your first round. And I'm just not 20 years old anymore. And it really, uh, and, and, I, and I caught a, uh, uh, you know, I caught a, a cold. It wasn't a, like a terrible cold at the beginning. But it, it's, it was basically, I think, with this completely disturbed, I had two nights of very, very disturbed sleep. Uh, and, um, well, human beings, they they die. They actually die quickly if you if you have sleep sleep deprivation uh, for any length mm. of time, and just a couple of bad nights, and you suddenly picked up a cold, and you're tired, and that's just round one, and um, <coughs> you know these these things they make a very big difference because you know twenty three hundred players can can play chess. They're not idiots. And the guy played a good game against me, and uh, I just got very lucky. Um, you know, there's a bit of skill. There's mm -hmm. a bit of skill, but 
I needed him to um, to blunder, and um, I made just enough of a defence, uh, and I, I got lucky. How did you feel having that tweet from Gary come the other day, and I was laughing you beat Fabi, and you were here at this desk? Yeah, I think he, I, mean, I, think he, I think amazing. he's probably pleased. I mean, just again talking about uh, this uh, needing to. Uh, take care of yourself. I mean, I played that blitz match against Gary a while ago and... Um, in New York? In... in, in, in St. Louis. Louis. Sorry. St. Louis. Sorry, yeah. And uh, it was sort of Gary's sort of a bit of a comeback and he said, Nigel, I'd like to play you and this. Uh, and for, you know, for me it's, a, it's an honour to play against one of the greatest players in, in chess history. He said, can you give me some dates between here and here? And, you know, and I said to him, Gary, th I'm quite busy. I can do these dates. This is really good for me. I said, but if absolutely forced, I could do these dates. And, of course, guess which ones <laughs> I got, the <laughs> bastard. <laughs> you know, so I flew... 11 time zones to go and play this match and people you know I actually felt look he played he played well uh, but do you know what it is to to travel 11 time zones and then try and play a, a tough blitz match against mm. uh, uh, I was just out of it and especially with uh, blitz chess it's, it's a matter of form and you've got to Hit, uh, hit the ground running. Uh, there's no time for sort of slowly working your way into it. I was just wiped out. And it was a shame because uh, I'm a much better player than that. And um, yeah, those are the, the things which I, I need to, to give more thought to. Um, it's not just, uh, you know, people talk about openings and stuff like that. And I think just having a bit more energy makes so much more of a difference in, in terms of points mm. than um, anything else. Very good. Well, if we don't have a final question, then maybe we should let Nigel off. Thank you yeah. very much. Thanks for watching, and um, Nigel, good luck tomorrow. You've got two rounds to go, yep. and all to play for. Yeah, everything to, to play for. It'd be nice if I could uh, manage uh, one and a half out of the last two. Uh, two would be a dream, but hmm. one, one and a half is, is my goal, really, from, from the right. uh, remaining games. We'll see. I don't know who I'm playing tomorrow, but we'll find out. Right. There are no easy games at this okay. point, so I just have to play some yeah. good chess. Well, we wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I was talking about the flight, but I didn't just find a way to work it in. Yeah, so that's okay. Yeah. Obviously, we could tell stories for now. Yeah, we could just yeah, keep yeah. going. I, I didn't want to ask if you knew more about cricket than Peter. Thank you. Thank you.